right, you guys, welcome back for another ELA Live. I am so excited to be here with you guys. My name is Hope King, and if you remember, we did a superhero lesson not too long ago together, and now I think we have Instagram who's joined in as well. So I'm gonna give everybody just a second to get in here and get ready for some fun reading today. And so I was just telling Facebook, Instagram, I was with you guys a couple of weeks ago when we did um, The Awesome Man. And we talked talk, talked all about awesome words and using our vocabulary and also visualizing. So I'm so excited to be back with you guys today. I'm going to share one of my favorite stories. Something you might not know about me is, yes, I am a teacher and I've taught a lot of different grade levels, but specifically my last few years of teaching, I was a science teacher specifically. And so I'm so excited because today's read aloud is going to bring in, yes, all of those ELA standards, an amazing story about a little girl, but also it's going to bring in some science. And I'm not just going to be with you today. I'm also going to be with you tomorrow, too. So today we are going to be reading a story called Ada Twist, Scientist. And I've got several things that I need for you to help me out with today. So I've got to know, are you ready? If you're ready, say I'm ready. Okay, hold on a second. I don't know if you remember my last lesson, but I don't move on until I hear everybody. That includes teachers, parents, and students. So I'm going to try this one more time. If you're ready... Say I'm ready. Okay, all right, I think I might have heard you a little bit better because during this lesson, I'm gonna want you to interact with me in the comments if I ask questions, but I'm also gonna have you do some things together with us here. So before we get started with our book today, number one, I'm just curious if anyone out there has ever tried to solve a problem. Today, when I was getting my whole entire lesson ready, I went downstairs, I had all of my stuff ready to go, and I was about to print it off, and guess what? All of the sudden, of all the days, my printer doesn't work. And so instantly, I can't just say, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to be able to print today. I have to say, okay, let me try to unplug it. And so I unplugged it and I plugged it back in. And guess what? The printer still wasn't working. So then I said, okay, what else can I try? Well, maybe it's the ink in my, in my printer. So I changed the ink and guess what? It still didn't work. So I pressed the power button. I said, maybe it's the power. Maybe there's some kind of connection that's not quite there. Maybe if I turn off the power, it'll fix the printer. So I turn the power off. You know, you count to 10 and you turn it back on and you try it again. And the printer still wasn't working. And so then I thought, maybe it's my internet connection. And I went down a whole list of things until finally I did something that got my printer working. I'm just curious if any of you have ever done that. Maybe all of a sudden you have a puppy dog and you fed your puppy dog this food and they eat it all up. And then all of a sudden one day your puppy dog just doesn't eat that food anymore. You can't just say, oh, well, I guess you're not going to eat today, puppy dog. I guess you're not going to eat tomorrow either. You instantly start thinking about, huh, why is my dog not eating? And then you start thinking and trying and testing different things, just like I did with my printer today. You test different things to see if one will work. Maybe you've lost a basketball game or lost a science, or lost not a science game, but lost um, a soccer game. And you said, well, why did we lose? And the next game you tried and tested some different things to see if it would help you perform better. If you've ever done any of those things or anything that sounded like any of those things, guess what? You are a scientist. No, you don't have to be an old person like me to be a scientist. Anybody can be a scientist. As a matter of fact, in our story today, the little girl Ada actually became a scientist when she was just a little baby. So that's what we're going to be talking about over the next two days is number one, we're going to read this book. But tomorrow, we're going to draw inspiration from this book and the things that we learned today. And we are going to do some science experiments and put all the strategies and skills that we talk about today to the test tomorrow. So the first thing that you, I want you to say is I, I didn't hear you. I got to go one more time. I, you got to say it proud. I am a scientist. Because that's right, you are. So before we actually get into the book today, I want to teach you a couple of really important words. You see, in science, it's so exciting because sometimes you actually get to make things explode. And a lot of times during our experiments, we get to test and try different things. And so words do the same thing in our mind. They help our knowledge explode. And so I'm going to teach you words that I call kaboom words. Can I hear you say kaboom no, not kaboom. Kaboom. Try it one more time. 
kaboom. That's right. All right, we're going to call these kaboom words. I've got five kaboom words for you. And anytime that you hear them in the story today, because they're going to make your mind explode with information because you know the meanings, I want you to say kaboom. So I'm going to say scientist. You're going to respond with kaboom. And that means that you have to repeat whatever I say. So you think you got it? I'm going to say scientist. You have to say Kaboom, that's right. And then you are going to repeat whatever I say. So let me get my words pulled up. We've got five. Here we go. Scientist, kaboom. You got it. Here we go. Chaos. Wait, I didn't hear you. I said chaos. You got to say chaos. Chaos, complete confusion or disorder. All right, did you do that? So you've got to do complete confusion or disorder. So we're making this motion with our hands because when something is filled with chaos or it's chaotic, that's another way that you can use the word, it is, com it is filled with confusion or disorder. So I'm going to show you a quick picture of what chaos looks like. So do you see this household right here? You've got children and you've got the mom and things are completely out of order. It is filled with confusion. That is called chaos. So let's try that one more time. Scientist, chaos, complete confusion or disorder. All right, you got it. Awesome. That is our first kaboom word. All right, so you ready for word number two? I want you to keep that one in your mind. After chaos, the next one that we have is scientist, curious. I really want to know. All right, I think you got the hang of it now. I saw a lot of you repeating after me. Yes, in fact, I can see you. And curious is when we're really curious about something, we really want to know something. We, we try everything to figure it out. Like maybe you want to know the secret ingredient that makes chocolate chip cookies so gooey and delicious. Or maybe you want them to be crunchy and you're going to have to change your ingredient. You're going to be really curious about that. So let's try that one more time. Scientist. Curious. I really want to know. All right, awesome job. You've got word number two. So you remember our first word was chaos. And we're doing this because everything's out of order. It's confusion. And our second word is curious. So we've got chaos and we've got curious. All right, three more. Here we go. The third word that I want you to know. Oh, this one's a good one. The third word is scientist. Pungent. The word was pungent if you didn't hear it. Try it one more time. Pungent. And what pungent means is having a strong or powerful or sharp odor. So when you do a lot of things in science sometimes, it is very pungent. Maybe some of you have brothers and sisters. I have a little 10-month-old, and man, when we change his diapers, it has a very pungent odor. Odor. So we're going like this for pungent because it has a very strong smell. So let me do it one more time and you're going to repeat after me. Pungent. A sharp or strong odor. All right, you got it. So that is word number three. Remember, our first word was what? Let's see if you remember. Chaos. That's right. Our second word was curious because you really want to know. And our third word, what do we have? Pungent pungent, a really strong smell. All right, our fourth word is research. So let's try this. Scientist, research. So for research, I'm typing on a keyboard, I'm looking something up, perhaps maybe even in a book, and I'm also using a magnifying glass because we can also make observations as part of our research. So we're going to say, let's try it one more time, repeat after me, research. Perfect. And for this, this is a careful study or investigation. Awesome job. You got it. So that is what research is all about. And scientists are always researching and learning prior to doing their experiments, which is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. All right. So let's go through these one more time. And we've got one more to learn. Our first word was chaos. That's right. Disorder or confusion. Our second word was Curious, you got it. Our third word was pungent, that strong odor or smell. And our fourth word, let's see if you remember, what was it? 
research. That's right, because we're looking things up, we're studying information, and we're also making strong observations. That is research. All right, and our fifth and final word is one of my favorite, and every scientist loves this word. Let me see if you've ever heard this word before. In the comments, if you've ever heard this word, let me know. It's a big word. It's a scientific word. We're about to get really smart. It is called hypothesis. Have you ever heard the word hypothesis used before? And let me tell you why scientists get so excited about this word. Because once you get to the hypothesis, guess what comes next? The experiment. And that is the fun of science. So first we've got to get through hypothesis. Now let's try it out. Here we go. Scientist, hypothesis, an educated guess. Awesome, and that's what a hypothesis is. A hypothesis is an educated guess based on information that you already have or something that you already know. So when I was working on my printer this morning, there's several things that I know about printers and sometimes they just need to be able to be unplugged to reset. So I made a hypothesis this morning that if I unplugged my printer, it would start back up. Now here's the unfortunate thing about hypothesis. Sometimes they're right and more times they're wrong. And so many of my hypotheses that I had this morning were completely wrong. But as scientists, we keep testing and trying different things until our hypothesis might just turn out to be correct. So that word is hypothesis. Let me see you do it. Here we go. Hypothesis. Awesome job. All right, I think you got the hang of it. Let's try all five of them. Here we go. Scientists. Kaboom, that's right. Our first word was chaos. Excellent job, disorder, confusion. Our second word was curious because we really wanna know. Our third word was pungent, that strong smell. The fourth word, remember? That's right, research because we're looking up information, why? Because we want to be able to make a strong, our fifth word, that big word, that scientific word was what? You got it. Hypothesis. Our educated guess based on something we learn or based on something that we know. So whenever you hear those words in the story today, I want you to say kaboom. Because now you know what those words mean. And that is going to help your brain explode with information and help you better understand what we are reading. And then throughout the week this week, I want you to see if you can use those words. And when you do, you get to use the hand motions. You can also teach them to your mom, teach them to your dad, teach them to your brother, teach them to your sister, teach them to anybody who wants to strengthen their vocabulary. So today, as we read Ada to a Scientist, I want you to listen for those words. One more quick thing before we get into it, though. The, one of the most important things that every scientist know, and it's not even important things, it's one of the most important questions that every scientist know. Let me know what you think it is. What do you think that every scientist asks themselves all the time? Let me see what you see, what you, what you think in the comments. I'm going to go back and read some of these. If you're putting they want to know what, maybe, but that's not the question word that I'm thinking of because when scientists really want to know something and one of the most important questions that they always ask, it's probably a question that you ask a lot to your moms and dads and you don't even realize it. The question is why? Why? We all want to constantly know why certain things happen, why certain things occur. I bet you've asked your mom and dad the question why many, many, many times before. Now I want you to think for a second. When you ask someone why, many times the follow-up word for that question is the word because. That's right, because. And so when we're asking why something happens, remember that follow-up word? I say why, you say because. Why, because, why, because. Y'all are getting sloppy on me. Y'all are getting sloppy. You didn't even say that loud. I didn't even hear you all the way here in Atlanta. We gotta try that again. I say why, you say because. Why, because, why, because. Awesome. That follow-up word because helps us identify the cause of something happening. Do you hear the word? Because, cause, you see, it all goes together. So when we're identifying why something is happening, we are also identifying the cause. Now maybe you've heard the word cause before, 
There's another best friend word that cause has. Do you know what that word is? A lot of times when you hear the word cause, you're also thinking of this word. Let me see if you can guess it in the comments below. Cause and, hmm, cause and, hmm, what do you think it is? If you said the word effect, you are correct. Cause and effect. Now we're gonna talk more about this tomorrow, but today I just want you to have this in your mind. Remember we said cause is usually followed by what word? Or the question why is usually followed by what word? Because. So the cause tells us why something is happening and the effect is what happened. So let me show you two pictures really quickly just for some practice. Let me see if I can get my iPad working. If I can't, I can just create a hypothesis and see what the problem is, but it's actually working right now. So remember, we just said we're looking at two things today, cause and effect. Cause is the why, or something that brings about a result, okay? Now we said the, the best friend word to this, the partner word to this is effect, and this is what happened. So I'm gonna show you this. This is a picture of a plant that has bloomed. This is the effect of a cause. So I want to know not what happened. I know what happened. The plant bloomed. I want to know what's that science word that we're talking about? Why? And why you're going to tell me because. So I want you to tell me the cause of this plant blooming. All right, what you got? Let me know in the comments. What is the cause of this plant blooming? So we're asking why did this plant bloom? All right, let's see what you got in the comments. Five, four, three, two, one. Now you could have had many different causes. Maybe the cause was I planted the seed. And so that is why, what happened? My flower bloomed. Maybe your cause is that you watered it. Maybe your cause is that it got sunshine. All of those can be causes for this effect of having our plant bloom. All right, one more, and then we're gonna look for some of these in our story today, okay. This is what happened. If you can't see this, this is a snowman that has melted. So think Olaf and why, he almost gave you the answer, why he could potentially have melted. Because remember, we're trying to find the cause. So when we're trying to find the cause, we're asking ourselves, why did this happen? Why did this occur? All right, let me know in the comments, what do you think? What do you think it is? All right. I have that the sunshine, the sun came out. It caused heat. And that is why our snowman melted. So maybe you have something along those lines. Those are called cause and effect relationships. And as scientists, we're always thinking, what's that question again? We're always asking what? why something happened. So today, as I read Ada Twist Scientist, I want you to think about what, a lot of times the author tells us what happens, but I want you to always have in the back of your mind, but why did it occur? So you're gonna be working to identify the causes today. All right, Ada Twist Scientist by Andrea Beattie. So two things, listen for your kaboom words, and always be asking yourself, why did that event occur? All right, here we go. Ada Twist Scientist. Ada Marie, Ada Marie said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos. There's one of our kaboom words left in her wake. Oh my goodness, look at all of that chaos happening. She ran through the day chasing each sound in sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. My kind of girl. I love, when, I love making observations and seeing what's happening around me. Her parents were frazzled but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly, young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. So even as a young baby, Ada was constantly making observations, something that all scientists do. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could 
ate his er, and her parents shelled stop as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and simply asked. What word do you think she asked? Why? That is a true scientist at heart, always wanting to know why. Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we call it granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck in your nose? Or pointy things on a ro stuck on a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. It's the best science word. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child. Did you say kaboom? Because there was one of our kaboom words. Who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. That's right, she will. Because that's what we all do as we're figuring out the world. You're a scientist. You're a scientist all the time, just like Ada. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. Just look around, you can see all the chaos. Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Now, on this page, we know what happened. She wreaked havoc, there was chaos, but as readers, just like scientists, one of the most important questions that we can ask is, what is that word? Why? So sometimes the author doesn't tell us why in words. They don't tell us the cause in words. We have to be intuitive enough to look at our pictures and find the cause. So what was the cause of the chaos at school? What was the cause? Let me know in the comments below, and I'm going to come back and read some of these. You can look easily and see what the cause, why the cause of her wreaking havoc at, school, havoc at school. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing. When a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Ooh, I can just smell it myself. Zowie, said Ada which got her to thinking, what is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know when there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. Mm, she's being mighty, what's that word? Curious, that's right. She started, she start at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Loves trying to figure things out. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells both stinky and good. One hypothesis, hypothesis Ada thought could be true. That terrible stink came, came from dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. So scientists are constantly changing their hypothesis and performing new tests. We're constantly wondering, what's that word? Why, that's right. Then zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested, the test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop. So she tried to put cologne on the cat. Her first hypothesis was, oh, I'm going to put cologne. But that didn't work. And so when that doesn't work, you modify or change your hypothesis and test again. But she was going to put the cat in the washing machine. I don't know if that's the best scientific hypothesis that we can make. All right, let's keep going. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now. 
by the time we count to three. Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why? Ada questioned. Her mother said no. What? Ada queried. Her father said go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. Which is kind of funny because Ada is always thinking, right? She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. What do you think she's going to do? She's always thinking. She's always coming up with a hypothesis and then testing it out. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat and she sat and she sat and she thought about science and Stu and the cat and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Here she goes again. Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her, que her questions and tapped on her chin, being what? Curious, right? She started at why and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Oh boy. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. Look at all of her thoughts. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and heart that is true. They remade their world. Now they're all in the act of, of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asks lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Because when you research and you learn, remember, then you can make a hypothesis. That's right. Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? I just love that book because it talks all about the characteristics or the character traits of a strong scientist. And it was lots of our words that we talked about today. A, a good scientist is very what? Curious. That's right. And they're constantly doing what? Research. Exactly. Because they want to use what they know to create a hypothesis. That's right. And all of those words were the words that we heard to describe the actions of Ada Twist. And remember that word that she always used? The word was what? Why? And so tomorrow we are going to use all of those words. We're going to be curious. We're going to talk about research. We're going to talk about creating a hypothesis. But we're also going to be testing something during an experiment tomorrow, just like Ada Twist does in this book. But before we get to that tomorrow, tonight, I need to do some very important things. If you are going to come to the laboratory tomorrow, first of all, I need you to go to the link and you must have your laboratory badge for tomorrow's experiments. Also, you must get your science brain ready to go. Let me see if I can get this twisted correctly. So all of these are printables in the resource that your parents can download and print for you. And I want you to color these and piece them together. You can make them look however you want. But you've got to come to the science lab ready to go tomorrow. But not only that, you've got to practice some things for me. Remember we talked about cause and what was that best friend word? Effect. That's right. So in the resources, I have some different scenarios. And one thing tells what happened but the other thing tells why it happened. So you've got to identify the events as a cause or as an effect. You're going to color, color the causes blue, the effects yellow. Then you can cut them out if you would like and you can make a fun little science craft that you can hang up. One more final thing. I also have some cards. 
And you can play a game called headbands with these cards. So you all know the game. You just put a headband on. You put the cards right here. All of these things tell what happened. But what I want you to try to do with a family member or a friend is in one minute, I want you to be able to read what happened, but I want you to see if you can come up with the, what's that question we always ask? Why? Why it happened, which means you're going to be identifying the cause. So tonight you're going to be working on causes and some, oops, it just fell apart. Glue yours better than I did. Got to create a hypothesis to figure out what went wrong and how I can fix it next time. But then you can glue your science craft together. I want you to come ready to the science lab tomorrow, ready to use your brains, ready to be curious, ready to do some research or investigation, ready to create a hypothesis. And then tomorrow we're going to get to experiment. So I will see you guys then. Bye, everybody.